up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for June 16th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Sunday edition of the podcast, a very special Father's Day edition. Just want to take a minute to say happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, whether you're a dad, an uncle, a father figure, uh, even some of the moms who are pulling double duty out there. Happy Father's Day. Very special happy Father's Day message to my own dad who is partly responsible for what you're seeing here, igniting that love of sports and really just uh, some of my favorite memories were just having those discussions about the old guys. I would read a book and be like, Dad, did you know that blah, 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 blah. And he would be like, yeah, and it would turn into discussions, playing Stratomatic Baseball, uh, just talking. We would do drafts of all-time teams. Like He would have first pick, and and we would try to compare. Uh, So just... Happy Father's Day, Dad. Love you. Very special Father's Day wishes to everyone out there, any father figure. And like I said, there are some moms out there pulling double duty, so salute to you as well. I also want to take a minute to wish my parents a very, very happy 46th anniversary. Uh, They really have, to me, set the bar high of what marriage should be and learned a lot just growing up with them and knowing that sometimes marriage is hard and as long as you have patience, understanding, uh, forgiveness, and just uh, unwavering love and support, um, like I said, it it sets the bar high and I love you guys. So very, very special anniversary shout out for my parents out there who really, like I said, have, have set the bar of what a marriage should be and Really, I, I, I strive to to get to that 46 years, for, or actually it would be 30 some years from now. But love you guys. Happy Father's Day. Happy anniversary. I uh, hope you guys are having fun today. All right. So let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, Donovan McNabb in his prime or Jalen Hurts? And surprisingly, everybody was split down the middle on this. It was 50-50. Personally, I'd probably take Prime Donovan, uh, but you guys all know how I feel about Donovan, so I I might be somewhat biased. I hope Jalen comes out, though, and lights it up. Uh, But as always, thank you for participating in the question of the day. There will be another one later in the show. Quick housekeeping note, the tournament for the Ultimate Philly Sports nickname is coming next week. The Selection Friday show will drop on Friday where I'll release the brackets and then you can rip me all weekend about how terrible my picks were. But quick summary, 64 nicknames, four regions, two matchups a day. You vote on what the ultimate Philly sports nickname is. And we'll run that through the end of June and beginning of July, just to break up the, the dog days of summer where there's nothing to talk about, but the Phillies. So that is coming. Friday is the selection show, and then the tournament kicks off on Monday, June 24th. All right, Phillies. And I'll I'll preface this with saying, Tawan Walker was not bad again. So I I was reading that he may have, excuse me, tweaked some things with his, uh, his delivery, and it seems to be paying off. The lineup just cannot give them any support yesterday. Six to two. They hit the ball hard and they got out early to the two-nothing lead. But the, the balls they hit hard were right at the, the Orioles players. Uh, but this is a good team. This is going to be a good se- or has been a good series. Today's game is going to be huge. Burns versus uh, Zach Wheeler. Looking forward to that on Father's Day. Hopefully I can get my iPad to to work it took a, like 20 minutes to get it to work at the pool yesterday and then the internet kicked out uh so hopefully i'll be able to watch that at the pool today phil still have an eight game lead over the braves and if they win today that means they went three and three in boston and baltimore coming off the london series and i will gladly take that some good news on the horizon trey turner uh probably could be back today but it looks like uh, I couldn't get a, a good read on it. I guess there's always a possibility he could return today, but looking like he'll be back tomorrow. Uh, and with Marsh back, he looked good. He didn't really, uh, he went 0 for 3 with a walk. But we got some questions now, and that leads to today's question of the day. With the imminent t- return of Trey Turner, 
Who is the odd man out for the Phillies right now? Is it going to be Christian Pache, David Dahl, or Johan Rojas? Somebody's got to get released or sent back to Triple A, and I, everybody has an opinion on this. Um, I think it might. I, I don't know which one to go. I mean, you could put Marsh. He did his rehab stint in center field. You could do some sort of uh, Pache uh, Marsh rotation in center. Uh, in left, you could do a a, a doll. Uh, uh, well, who's the other guy? Why can't I think? I guess you could do doll Pache or with some sort of maneuvering around where you got guys platooning. Maybe Edmundo Sosa goes out there. Maybe you keep Edmundo Sosa at short and put Trey Turner in left. Uh, lots of questions for the Phillies, but who is the odd man out? Is it Pache, Dahl, or Rojas? 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Text me, leave a voicemail, whatever you need to do. But who is the odd man out? You can also hit me up on all the social media. Jimbo underscore Mont, Twitter and TikTok at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. There will be a poll on both of those pla- or all three of those platforms. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you got to do, comment wherever you're watching this. But who is the odd man out when Trey Turner comes back? Is it Pache, Dahl, or Rojas? 267-495-8531. Get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. All right. Philly Goat has done it again. If you've seen the LeBron James shirt that says more more than an athlete philly goat did a play on that and it's perfect for philly especially for the summertime it's the less than an athlete shirt and i think we're all there uh so go check that out along with whatever else they have get some shoes to match phillygoat.com use the promo code jim montgomery for 10 percent off your order but we're all less than an athlete and now philly goat has a shirt to prove it Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. All right, tough loss for the Union last night, 2-1. to one. Uh, In stoppage time, they gave up the, the game winner. And this was not a good loss at all. It's, uh, Miami was shorthanded. There was no Messi. Uh, they had the lead. And at one point, there were two men up. And I still don't understand how soccer does that, where you can't sub in. But... They were had two men up and gave up the game winner. So not a good game at all for the Union. But they'll be back at it this week. And lots of comments and, and talk about the Joel Embiid, Paul George flirtation, I guess you could call it. And I love it. I mean, I, I said it yesterday. And listen, no, what they've been doing has not been working. So if Joe wants Paul George... I mean, at this point, you got to do something. And maybe it's just because I'm getting beaten down by it. But if Joe is in the Paul George camp and it's somebody he wants to play with, why not? I mean, it. we have a three-year window anyway. Uh, see if we can maximize it. I, I don't know. Still, again, not my first choice. But if it's going to keep the big man happy, then let's keep the big man happy. All right, Flyers signed a, <clears throat> excuse me, a forward from Latvia, Rodrigo Abels, uh, versatile former first round pick of the Vancouver Canucks in 2016. Pretty clutch in the postseason, so he he's not afraid of the bright lights. And I know for Flyers fans out there, we haven't been in the postseason, but this is like a Howie Roseman low risk, high reward pickup for the Flyers. There is no update on Mishkov, but. I mean, it's low risk, high reward, and with the shape, and and I still can't get over how bad of a shape the Flyers organization was when they took over, but this is the kind of pick that comes in, maybe has something to prove, and you can catch lightning in a bottle, kind of like I said, like what Howie Roseman does, Uh, but I'll take it. And for the Eagles, I, I wanted to mention this the other day, and I didn't, but if you haven't done so... Do a search for the the clip where Adam Peters, the commander's GM, calls Howie a pain in the ass. Uh, it's funny. And I, I wonder, like, I like seeing the glimpses of how these things work behind the scenes because it shows that Howie's constantly working and, and tries to pull one over. And he was like, yeah, that pain. He's like, no, 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 no. 
And, and then he called and he's like, no. And they called him right back. Well, what if we do that? And like, I think maybe how he like just wears them down and just keeps bugging kind of like when you're, you're trying to get something out of your parents and you just keep asking, please, 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 please. And then finally they're like, yeah. And I, this is how I picture Howie Roseman asking for trade it's like come on man you know you want to come on come on come on come on and finally it's like all right fine we'll, we'll do the trade um but check out the video it, it's funny um to see adam peter say you're a pain in the ass um quick nick Foles rant because there was a lot of talk about where nick Foles ranks and i know we've talked about it on here before WIP was doing the Mount Rushmore week and everybody, there were some people, I forget whether it was the fans or, or somebody had Nick Foles in the Mount Rushmore Eagles quarterbacks and we got, or just Eagles players. We got to pump the brakes a little bit. Now, I will be forever grateful for what Nick Foles did for us during that Super Bowl run. Can't take it away. Nobody played better in the NFC Championship game in the Super Bowl. Like it was just, he was the right guy at the right time. I, I've said it, I'm going on record, I don't know if we win the Super Bowl with Wentz, so I'll take it. However, you take the whole body of work, and I don't think you put him as a top four player. you got to separate the moment from winning the Super Bowl with the, the entire body of work. Yes, he has a statue. Yes, he won the first Super Bowl. Can never take that away. And he deserves a lot of respect and should never have to pay for a meal or a drink anytime he comes back to Philly. But does that make him a top four player all time for the Eagles? No. And let me know what you think. It's a little bit of a bonus question of the day, but I've been sitting on that and I, I don't see it. And like, yeah, he had the 27 and two, but the, he's, he's never like he... He was never the full-time starter. He could never keep that job. Uh, he was just one of those guys that played well off the bench and was able to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not top four, top top moment. If we're doing the Mount Rushmore of Eagles moments, yes, you put Nick Foles there. But top four players, no, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I don't even think he's a top five quarterback uh, in Eagles history. But let me know your thoughts on that because I know there's a lot of Nick Foles love and I'm not shitting on Nick Foles right now. I'm just saying Nick Foles is not a top four player in Eagles history. All right, we're going to switch it up somewhat today and go back to 2013 and we're going to do a little talk a little PGA tour. And on this day in 2013, it was the final round of the U.S. Open at Marion Golf Club in Haverford. Going into the final round, Phil Mickelson had a one-shot lead over Hunter Mayhem. Charles Schwartzel and Steve Stricker. He was looking for that elusive U.S. Open to complete his career Grand Slam. Uh, he three putted early on holes five, three and five, uh, but then he eagle ten to take the lead back, and it looked and felt like this is where Phil was going to go on a run and finally win his U.S. Open. And then Justin Rose, who started the, the day two shots back, birdied twelve and thirteen to put a little bit of pressure on Phil. And Phil promptly bogeyed the 13th to give Justin Rose the lead. And then Rose was able to par his final two uh, to finish it one over and win his first major. Um, and he he's actually his first win his first major, and he already had three second places. So this was a big win for Justin Rose. Phil still was unable to close the deal on the final round of a U.S. Open. But Justin Rose was the first Englishman since 1970 uh, to win the U.S. Open and the first Englishman to win a Masters since 1996 when Nick Faldo won the uh, since 1996 when Nick Faldo won the Masters. And it was the sixth time coming in second place for Phil. He did go on to win the British Open later that summer, but just could not get the job done once again at the U.S. Open. This was the fifth time the U.S. Open was played at Marion. Um, highlights from the last, the final day. Sean Stefani had the first ace at Marion during a U.S. Open round when he hit the hole in one on hole 17. But on this day in 2013, it was the final round of the U.S. Open at Marion, won by Justin Rose, who came back. He was two shots off the lead to start the day. 
Chase down, put the pressure on Phil. Phil couldn't handle the pressure, and Justin Rose won his first major, the 2013 U.S. Open at Marion in Haverford, one of those courses that I probably would shoot 200 on, but I still would love to get to play at Marion. So if anybody out there has connections at Marion, it is Father's Day. I'm a father, just saying. Uh, but on this day, it was Justin Rose winning the U.S. Open at Marion. Uh, finally today, we're going to take a trip down Philly's memory lane and spotlight Kent Tocovi, relief pitcher. He was a non-drafted free agent of the Pirates in 1969, which traded to the Phillies in April of 85 for Al Holland and Frankie Griffin. Played for the Phillies through 1988, so in his four years, he went 24-26 and 26 with a 3.01 ERA, 25 saves, and he was a solid guy. He was almost like a, an Iron Man type picture, pitcher where you could put him out there every day. In 1987, he pitched 90 games. Uh, one of three times in his career, he pitched in 90 games. Uh, he was 41 heading into his last season in Philly. He did play another year or two after that. But I just remember my lasting image of Kent Tocovi is the ridiculous sidearm submarine style that he would throw. It just looked nasty uh, with his big glass, like dark shaded glasses um, and just being sort of like, like I said, the Iron Man, like every day, like there, like it was almost like every other day, Kent Tocovi, you knew he was going to pitch. Uh, and then there's always the images when he played for the Pirates with the pillbox hat, with the glasses. Uh, but he was an all-star in 1980, won the World Series with the Pirates in 1979. He's in the Pirates Hall of Fame and did serve as one of the the uh, Phillies broadcasters from 91 to through 97. Uh, nickname was Teak. And I, I just, he's, it's one of those names. And whenever I hear people talk about Tocolvi and, and say Teak, it reminds me of Harry Callis say I can hear his voice saying, Hey Teak, what do you think about the Phils today? Kevin Gross going on the mound and or whatever. Uh, so Kent Tacovi is today's Phillies memory lane. Uh, my father in law would love it because he's a Pirates fan, but he did play for the Phillies from nineteen eighty five to nineteen eighty eight. Uh, and one of the most durable relievers uh, with, the, like I said, the ridiculous sidearm uh, release. And just you knew you go out there every day, he could pitch an inning or two. So Kent Tocovi is today's Phillies memory lane spotlight. On this day in 2013, Justin Rose won the uh, U.S. Open at Marion. Coming back from two shots down, entering the final day, chasing down Phil Mickelson and putting the pressure on. And Phil just could not handle it. Let me know your thoughts on Nick Foles' ranking in Eagles history. Uh, that's a little bit of a bonus question of the day. Get your Paul George, Joel Embiid. Get that off your chest. 267-495-8531. Voicemail, text message, whatever you got to do. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. And our question of the day as the Phillies head into the final game uh, in Baltimore. When Trey, Trey Turner comes back, who is the odd man out? Is it Pache, David Dahl, or Johan Rojas? Let me know what you think. I really don't know which way you go because Pache, if you you can't send him to the minors, you're almost going to have to release him. Dahl has some options. Would Rojas benefit from going to AAA? I don't know. So this is a tough one, but let me know your thoughts. 267-495-8531. Go enjoy your Father's Day. It's going to be another beautiful day out. Have fun. Again, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there and the father figures who step in and, and do the right thing. Special anniversary shout out, 46 years to my parents. I love you guys and thank you for, for setting the bar and, and modeling what uh, 46 years of marriage should look like uh, and, and giving us something to strive for. Love you guys. But this has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm for June 16th, 2024. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Sunday, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.